Hi, I'm Diane Hendricks and welcome to Fresh to Frozen and Back. This show is going to make your life easier. In each episode, I'll teach you how to prepare delicious and better for you meals, how to freeze them properly, and then bring them back to the table at a later date. Little zhuzhing up and you've got yourself another meal. Today, it's all about quick party appetizers. First thing I'm gonna make is so easy. There's one, two, three, four ingredients. They're goat cheese stuffed, bacon wrapped dates. So good, so simple. I use them in my catering, so I'm giving away a secret. But here's all you do. You're gonna take your bacon and you're gonna cut it in half. And I have, what do I have? Two, four, I have four pieces, which means I'm gonna get eight wraps. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna line the bacon up on a cutting board or a baking sheet, wherever you want. Line them up all nice and easy so you can get them all done at the same time. So now I have goat cheese, just plain old goat cheese. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, you can use a pastry bag or at home, you can use a Ziploc bag. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this goat cheese and I'm just gonna load it into this Ziploc bag. Just like that. And then I'm telling you, people make the, when you stuff uh, dates with anything, it's so much easier to use a pastry bag. I just, if you've made this before and you have not used a pastry bag, I just saved you so much time. Then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut a corner out of the pastry bag. So you've got a little hole on the side. And there you go. Now you've got it just like that, ready to use. So you're gonna take your dates, which are pitted, and you're gonna open them up. And then all I do is you just squeeze a little bit in. Just like that. Just squeeze a little bit in and then close it and set it on top of your bacon. And we'll just keep doing that. So easy. Super simple. Actually, you're going to put the goat cheese size down on the bacon. Open it up. Little squeeze. Goat cheese has a really strong flavor, so you don't need a lot. You don't want a whole lot of goat cheese. So just this little bit, and it makes such a great party appetizer, and they freeze beautifully. When you're done, whatever hasn't been eaten, just stick in a Ziploc bag that's freezer safe, stick it in the freezer, pull it back out when your company comes over, stick it back in the oven for about 10 minutes and you got yourself that same appetizer over again. So it's good to, and it, it really stays in the freezer very well and it doesn't like deteriorate or anything. It's really good. Okay, so there we go. Fill these all up. And this is all you do. You're just gonna take your bacon and you're gonna roll it around it and you're just gonna go like this, seam side down on a baking sheet. Look how quick this is. And I, you know, your guests will probably eat two, maybe three of these. So think about it. if you're having five people over, you only have to make like 15 of them. And it's really easy. And you separate them a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna stick them in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And then I'm gonna drizzle some rosemary honey on it. And that will caramelize on top of it. So good. And then you just pop a skewer in them and you serve them to your guests. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna pop it in the oven. 400 degrees, stick it right in. And then in a few minutes, I'll go back and I'll drizzle some rosemary honey. And all this is, is honey, your favorite honey, local, whatever honey that you like, in a pan, warm it up, and drop some rosemary sprigs in it, and that rosemary will infuse into the honey. And then let it boil, turn it off, let it sit, and that will infuse in there. And then I just stick it in a squeeze bottle, labeled and dated, and this freeze is great too. And then just drizzle it on top, which I'll show you in a minute. So while those dates are cooking, I'm gonna go to the next ridiculously quick um, appetizer, tuna tartare in a cucumber cup. 
tuna tartare in a cucumber cup with a ginger mango gastrique, which is just a fancy way of saying a reduction. So here we're gonna start with the cucumber cups. This is not the only thing you can put in a cucumber cup, anything. The in deviled egg fillings, cottage cheese, any type of fillings that you like that you would normally put on a cracker or a crostini, you can put in a cucumber cup. You'll save some carbohydrates, some calories, and you'll add some flavor. Before we cut this, I like to um, peel my cucumbers in ribbons. First you wash it, and then I'll just you'll just go down and leave a strip of green. I just think it looks really pretty. The skin has fiber, and it looks really nice when you do a cucumber cup. And you can save this in your freezer, and I don't know if you watched the show, you know I have a running bag in my freezer of all the stems of my herbs and the ends of the carrots and the ends of the onions and all of that all in one Ziploc bag. And then when it fills up to the top, the gallon bag, I boil it up and I make homemade vegetable stock. And then I make the stock, I cool it, strain it, and freeze it. And then I always have vegetable stock in my freezer. So, and this will go in too. This will go in, and this will go in. Okay, so it depends on how big you want it. So I like a cucumber cup about that, about a half of an inch, I would say. A little less than a half of an inch. And so what you do is you cut it, and then I use a melon baller. It works really well and it's so fast, you can bang out this entire cucumber in just minutes. And then you just take the uh, seeds out. And again, you take the seeds out. Which for a lot of people that's good because a lot of people have indigestion with cucumber seeds so you're taking most of the seeds out. But what I do is, because I don't like my waste and I don't put this in the bag, I will freeze these. I'll take these little tops, the little insides, I'll freeze them on a baking sheet and then I'll put them in a Ziploc bag and then I'll just plop them in my water and it actually infuses your water and it's really delicious. And then you can eat it at the end. Okay, so I just made three here. And we'll put these on, let me make a couple more because it looks pretty when there's more. And just eyeball, you don't have to measure, just eyeball the cucumber cup. Some people make them like this, but to me that's too big of a bite. Like if I'm gonna take a bite, I don't want a big chunk like that. So I prefer this size. So again, we're gonna do, there's two sides to the melon ball, we're gonna do this, boom. And you don't wanna go down too far because you don't want to, it to be open on the bottom because you don't want the stuff to fall out the bottom, okay? So there we go, we've got our cucumber cups and it makes such a beautiful presentation. Okay, so these guys are all ready to go. Let me get a plate so we can show you how pretty it looks. So we'll get these all ready. And the beauty of this is you can set up like this. You can have this all set and ready to go for when the tartare is done. First thing I'm gonna do is take my tuna. This is wild caught tuna. And the key with this is this is partially frozen. Even if you have fresh tuna and you're gonna make tartare, stick it in the freezer because if it's just partially frozen, it's so much easier to cut. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna cut and then stack. This is how I do it. I always say, this is how I do it. I don't know if everybody does it, but this was, is what works for me and tuna tartare is one of my signature dishes in my catering. Just gonna slice it thin, nice and thin, because you want little pieces. If you get like sushi grade ahi tuna, it'll be much redder but this is beautiful. This is a really nice tuna. And then you'll go straight down three times. I'll go one and then one more because you want small pieces. And then I'll just go across and cut it like this. But while it's slightly frozen, it just makes it so much easier to cut. And the same thing here. You want a nice sharp knife as well. Now, believe it or not, this one little tuna steak will serve 10 people because you only put a very little bit in the cup. So I'm gonna show you just how much you get out of just one tuna steak. So if you are literally having company, you can go to the grocery store and get one tuna steak and feed your entire company. You could do probably 20 people with this appetizer, if not more, with one tuna steak. So even though you're buying a very high grade uh, fish, like a really good fish, and then if you see these little white things, I just put them off to the side and I give them to my dog, she loves them. You'll see it's not frozen here, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to cut, but that's okay. There, so now that's the base because it's tuna, you wanna taste all that tuna. And now we're gonna mix it up. So let me just grab a bowl. So we have the tuna, and now all you're gonna do is flavor it up. Now it's all about just adding flavor. So. What we're gonna do is we are going to add a little soy sauce. 
a little ginger. And then we're gonna add a little bit of sesame oil. You don't need a lot, but this is toasted sesame oil and it gives it such a good flavor. Some fresh cilantro that you're gonna chop, which is so good. It adds such a nice uh, accent to this. Gonna add some cilantro. And if you don't like cilantro, don't use it. A lot of people don't. There's like actually like a gene that for some people cilantro tastes like dirt or soap, people say. I love it, my mother absolutely hates it. So that's just the way it is. Okay, so we're gonna stir this all up. And as a little twist to my classic, the ginger really, oh my gosh, you can smell it. It smells so good and the flavor is so fantastic. But as a twist to my classic uh, tuna tartare, I'm going to sprinkle in a little bit, that's just a little more soy. I'm gonna sprinkle in a little bit of the Bloody Point Evolution. It is so good. It's got very citrus forward notes with a lot of spice. It's not too hot, but it's gonna add a beautiful flavor to this. It's really, uh, culinary wise, it's revolutionary too. Okay. I'm gonna stay, th again, these, these little guys are gonna go over here with the um, cucumber ends. So what I like to do with this is I'll flatten it out with my finger and I'll just slice down like this. And I'll do that in here and then I'll do it here. Cause I want the green part. I don't want the white part for this because it's too powerful. So now I just kind of fanned it out and then you can get very teeny tiny little pieces. So you see how small that is? So it's not overpowering, but it definitely adds flavor. So we have the green onion in there. And that's it. It's so easy. And this freezes beyond beautifully. Now what happens when you freeze this is if you put it in one of these containers, whatever you have left, you can put in one of these containers and then you'll freeze it. But when you take it out, even if it's a month later, two months later, three months later, the outside is going to be a little bit brown. Once it defrosts and you move that outside, the whole inside is that bright, bright red if you're using the ahi tuna. Okay, and this is all there is to it. Just a little, and you're just gonna plop it right in there. Oh my God, I wish we had smell-o-vision. It smells amazing. And I'm telling you, this is literally one of my signature dishes. Everybody loves it. And your friends and family are gonna love it too. I just gave my secret away. It's on my website though but the bloody point takes it to another whole other level. Oh my gosh, look at that. And it's so pretty too. And wait till the sesame seeds go on it. And then the gastrique. So a gastrique, I'm not gonna show you how to make it. All it is is a reduction. You add a little bit of sugar and this is just a ginger mango juice that I use. And you just simmer it on the stove for, believe it or not, it could be a couple of hours until it reduces by almost 80%. And then you get this syrupiness to it. And it's so good. Okay, so look at how pretty that is. And then this is the gastrique, which is on my website, dianehendricks.com. Just a little sweetness. Oh my gosh. And then you're just gonna top it with, I like to make a mess. I don't like everything uniform. Just gonna top it with some sesame seeds. Look at what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful dish that is. And that is our first quick, how quick was that? That is our first, uh, plated quick appetizer. And look how much I have left, and that's two, four, six. I have enough for another 10 or 15. Okay, and then I'm gonna freeze that. I'm gonna put it in the container and I'm gonna freeze it. Let me check on the dates. Oh, they're coming along nicely. I'm going to take them out and I'm going to put the honey on them. And then we are going to make some bloody point evolution uh, strip steak bites. So you can see the bacon starting to cook. Don't ever leave your oven open. You wanna keep it nice and hot. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the rosemary honey and we're just gonna drizzle it on the top. Look at that. You can even drizzle a little bit more at the end, but what this is gonna do is it's gonna caramelize. You don't even know. It's like, it's like going to heaven, okay? All right, so that's back in the oven. I have a date with my date. Okay, so um, let me clean up for a minute and then I'm going to come back and we're gonna do the Bloody Point Evolution Steak Bites with a creamy blue cheese dip. And then we're also gonna make some Swedish turkey meatballs that'll knock your socks off. I'll see you in a minute.
Now I'm gonna tell you about a fabulous new product that has revolutionized the Bloody Mary industry. It's called Bloody Point Revolution. It's the most transportable, convenient, and versatile Bloody Mary ever created, all while virtually eliminating storage space and waste. This revolutionary product not only has an award-winning flavor, it's all natural, non-GMO, gluten-free, and low in sodium. The brilliance behind Evolution is it not only yields an unmatchable Bloody Mary, it adds the most unique flair to your next culinary experience. Being unique is the bloody point. Evolution in a nutshell. One small convenient packet of bloody point evolution when mixed with 30 ounces of water instantly gives you one of the best tasting Bloody Mary mixes ever. Innovation is their soul. Great taste is its heart. Never bringing you anything but the best is their passion. They evoke a seaside state of mind a laid-back lifestyle, and ultimately something that needs to be experienced to be believed. One sip, one bite, one taste, and you will know why Bloody Point Evolution is one of a kind. They also have an unbelievable line prepared Bloody Mary mixes. There's one called the Remedy, the Coastal Mary, and the Classic Bloody Mary. You will never have a better Bloody Mary mix than this. To discover more, visit bloodypointmixing.com. For more information or you want to contact them, info at bloodypointmixing.com. Trust me, you are going to love this. Okay, so simple. Strip steak Bloody Mary steak bites. So easy and super delicious. Here's all you do. I'm going to take a bowl and just put a little bit of olive oil in it. And then I'm going to take the Bloody Point Evolution Powdered Bloody Mary Mix. So good. The flavor is insane. Okay, and you have to be careful with this. So when you first open the packet, you can't inhale it. So you literally want to hold it away a little bit because it's so powerful and concentrated, but it is so delicious. Okay, so then you're just going to take this mixture and I'm going to just spoon it on top of the steak. And I have like these disposable gloves in my kitchen. I use them all the time. I have them right in the drawer in my kitchen. I don't have them with me right now, so I'm gonna use my hands. But if you have disposable gloves at home when you're dealing with raw chicken or you're rubbing something into something, it's so easy to just use them. But I'm gonna use my hands because you don't wanna just leave it there. You wanna get it in there. So you're gonna push it down, massage it, get it in there. And you can feel that it's, got, it's in there. And then you're gonna flip it over. And this is organic beef, top grade. You want the best quality beef. Actually, you want the best quality everything whenever you're cooking. Sometimes when you spend a little bit more to get a higher quality thing, you don't need as much of it, number one. Like for example, like a Parmesan cheese. If you get a really good cheese and grate it yourself, you're gonna get so much flavor and so much less rather than one of those plastic containers of cheese. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do there is I'm gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes and let it get infused. And in the meantime, I'm gonna wash my hands and we're going to take those dates out of the oven. These are like heaven. So good. Okay, so you can broil them if you want them a little crispier, like this one's really super crispy. You're gonna pop a skewer and just lay it on a plate. And this makes the most beautiful and delicious party bite. You can put a little bit of fresh greens on the platter, whatever you like. And you can get really pretty skewers. You see how these skewers have like a little red dot on the end? These are hot. Pretty little red dot. You can get any type of skewer that you want. Oh, that's so good. And just get through it, boom. So you can just skew it right from there, hold the end, and then just pop them on. Look at that. And it looks nice. Don't line them all up. Don't line them all up. It's so funny that in my catering, my sister helps me a lot. When I have a new person on staff and they're like helping plate something and they start plating them all in a row, my sister goes, no, she wants it messy. 
make it messy. I think it looks nice when it's not so super neat and organized. Okay, let me set this over here. And then what you're gonna do is you'll take another, if you want, take another drizzle of that rosemary honey and just kind of try not to get it all over the skewer. So just kind of get it on the top of each one, bink. Just like that. I don't have any greens in front of me right now, but you can add some little greens to the plate. But look at that. Goat cheese stuffed bacon wrapped dates with rosemary honey, yum. Okay, now this steak is ready to cook. Okay. Oh, I still have this left. This is what's left. It's the olive oil and the, the Bloody Point Evolution. What I would do with this, I was I'd probably add a little bit more olive oil, maybe a little bit of rice wine vinegar, and you have a nice little salad dressing or a marinade. So let's get going. Get this on. Okay, and this heats up very quickly. Okay, so we're just gonna heat some olive oil in the pan. Oh, it's hot already. And you know, like I said before, sometimes the pans are uneven, it's okay. Then you're just gonna pop the steak on. You want that sizzle. Okay, so I'm gonna cook that, and while that's cooking, we're gonna make the sauce. So easy. Just a simple blue cheese sauce. Sour cream. A little dill, dried dill. You can use fresh if you want, it's great. A pinch of salt. And some blue cheese, this happens to be like double cream gorgonzola, which is to die for. And then we'll pop that in there. And then all we're gonna do is you're just gonna mix it all together. I wouldn't use the beater if it wasn't blue cheese because the blue cheese is, it's so hard to break up. That's it. It's as simple as that. Okay, let me just take a look on the bottom. Oh. Nice. Okay, so we're gonna let them cook just a little bit more because when you cook steaks and then you're done with it, you want it to sit and rest and it's still gonna cook. And I like my steak medium rare. That's just how I like it. Here's a little bit extra sour cream, so I'm gonna just take this and put this back in here. Whip it back up. So you're gonna serve this just like this. Ooh, so good. Okay, that steak's just about done. I'm gonna turn it off for now. It depends on how you wanna plate it. This is your blue cheese dip, which we can put a little extra dill on the top. It looks pretty. Love it. And actually, if you wanted, you could actually do something like this for your guests. You could just put that there and then let them take a little bit of blue cheese if they want that with them. I would like that. So we're gonna let these rest before I cut them. Mmm, that looks so good. So we're gonna let that rest for five minutes, and then when we come back, we'll cut these up into the bites, and then I'm gonna show you the Swedish turkey meatballs. You're gonna love them. Okay, so now we're gonna cut these up into little bites, which is what you want. Oh, that's nicely cooked. You're just gonna cut these into little squares. Oh my gosh, they look so good. And this is a beautiful organic strip steak. And again, you can make them nice and neat or you can pile them. And I like just a little pile. We'll just do the one, just for show. We'll do the pot, a little pile. That one too, that hen looks good. I just wanna dive into that one. And then you can just kind of, if you want, you can just set a little container with skewers next to it. So these are our Bloody Mary Evolution steak bites. I might even sprinkle just a little bit more of the Bloody Mary Evolution powder on there, just for a little bit of extra. That's beautiful and delicious. And then just put a little knife in the blue cheese so that your guests can have some blue cheese, maybe some crackers next to it. Okay, we're gonna do the Swedish turkey meatballs. So, you're gonna take ground turkey. If you use ground turkey breast, you're going to get a less fat, healthier version of the turkey. So I have ground turkey breast here. I'm just gonna put it in a bowl. We're gonna add some breadcrumbs. 
You can use panko, unseasoned, seasoned, whatever you like. I think unseasoned is better. The key to Swedish meatballs is that nutmeggy and allspice flavor. These aren't meatballs with like seasoned breadcrumbs and Parmesan cheese. This is a nutmeg, uh, allspice based. Okay, so we're just gonna mix this up a little bit. Then I'm going to add the allspice, not too much, it's very powerful. Nutmeg, major key factor here. Beautiful. And an egg. You don't have to beat the egg first, as long as you get it in there and incorporate it in. It's really delicious. And we're going to have to add some salt into this. And then the sauce is what really makes it. These freeze great. You can freeze them cooked or you can freeze them uncooked. So I'm going to show you once we make the meatballs, which ground turkey is a little bit messier to use than ground beef because it's like a, a softer texture. So you have to make sure you have wet hands. So it's going to take a couple of seconds to get this all mixed together. And I'm going to add some salt. Just a nice hefty pinch of salt. Great. Okay, now here comes the messy part, but that's what's fun. All right, let's roll the meatball. Okay, let me get a little bowl of water because you're going to need wet hands. We're gonna get the beef broth boiling. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this on nice and high and this is gonna start to broil. All right, so I've got my bowl of water, I've got the bowl for the meatballs, and we're gonna get started. So, what you're gonna use is a spoon to get the right amount so that all of your meatballs are the same size. So you can do them in different ways. You can do, and you have to be very light. See, my hands are wet here now. You have to be very light with your hands when you're working with ground turkey. So this is a nice size. That's a good size for a bite, one bite meatball. And then just try to get them all about the same size. You just roll them up. To really make sure you have your hands like really, it's really light on your hands. Because if you squeeze the meatball too much, you're not gonna get it round, it's gonna get all mushy. So we made some meatballs. I'm gonna rinse, clean off my hands. That's beef broth in that pot that I'm, gonna, that I'm bringing to a boil. So you're gonna get that beef broth boiling up really well. Now, say you made all the meatballs that you wanted and you have some left. What are we gonna do with it? We're gonna freeze it. Stick it in a container like this, which I'm gonna do right now because I'm not gonna roll the rest of these meatballs. I'm good at eyeballing. This one, this is a better size. And then all you're gonna do is just put the mix that you have left into this container. Label it with masking tape, what it is and the date and then just stick it in your freezer and you can pull this out and this is enough meatball mix for two, four, six, there's eight there. This is four times that amount. This is over 30 meatballs right here. Okay, so this is starting to boil. Okay, so we've got this water boiling and we're gonna drop these meatballs in. I think the easiest way is to go like this. It's all okay because, but then you want one quick stir gently to just, you're just kind of moving the liquid around a little bit so they don't stick to each other at the beginning and let them boil. So those are gonna boil in the beef broth and when they're done, we'll plate them, but right now I'm gonna make the sauce. So easy. Okay, here's what we got. Sour cream. Worcestershire, or as my dad used to say, Worcestershire. A little bit of sherry. Stir it up. A lot of flavor in there. A little bit of salt. Put a little more nutmeg into the sauce. The sauce is the key. Little nutmeg in the sauce, and then we're gonna add a little bit of cornstarch. Okay, so we've got all of those ingredients in there, and what we're going to do now is add the beef broth, but we're gonna add a very little bit of it because we wanna temper it, because we don't want this sour cream to like curdle. So we're gonna take the, a little bit of the beef broth and we're just gonna strain it into the mixture. Just a hit first to start. And then we're just gonna whisk this all in together. There you go. 
And then once this is done, you just get this all ready. And then you, you're gonna pour this back into that pan once you take your meatballs out. So we're trying to reduce pans. Okay, so now what I do with this is I'm going to strain the broth and it's gonna have like solids in it and you know like pieces from the meat and it's gonna be cloudy. So what I do with this is I cool it and I use this in my dog's food. So I put it in, their, in uh, Sydney's dry kibble and she loves it. So we're gonna let that sit. So these meatballs are done. Oh my gosh, they're so good. And then we're just gonna take the sauce and put it on, back on the stove in the same pan. You can wipe the pan out, actually. We're gonna wipe out this pan because we don't want any of those solids in our sauce. And then we're gonna put this into the pan. Oh, it's so good, it smells delicious. If you're making a ton of meatballs, you'd make more sauce, but you only need a very little bit of sauce with this, and you'll see. All right, so now this sauce is heating up. We're just gonna heat this up just a little bit, and then we're going to whisk this broth back into it. So now the sauce is nice. Oh, it's starting to bubble a little bit, so we're gonna whisk a little bit of this broth in here, a little more of the broth in. You don't want it too thick, and you don't want it too thin, but you want it hot. And I don't like to completely coat the meatballs in the sauce. I like to kind of drip it on top of it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Oh, this sauce is so good. So I think it needs just a hit more nutmeg. You always got to taste. And another little pinch of salt. Other than that, it's perfect. Okay, so now we have this delicious sauce and we're going to plate it. So we have the meatballs. You can do this if you want. You can also roast these in the oven if you'd like, but I don't like Swedish meatballs to be brown. So what I'm gonna do, is take just a little dollop on top. It's okay if it falls down the side. It's all part of it. Then you're gonna take your skewers. And you're just gonna plop a skewer in there into all of them. You can even serve some sauce on the side if you'd like. You can serve this. It's nice and hot for your guests. And they make these tiny little spoons that are cute and everything. You can put this right on the plate. And if anybody wants to add more, they can. Put another little pinch of allspice on there, maybe some green. A little bit of greens around it. And you've got yourself some Swedish turkey meatballs that are to die for. Super simple, super quick. So these are all quick party appetizers that you and your guests will love. Thanks for watching Fresh to Frozen and Back. Please share this episode with your friends and family and those that you love. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and all of that, Diane Hendricks, and I will see you next time.